Hello guys and welcome back to another KSB2 video and in this video we will be sending a single stage to orbit more specifically a cargo SSTO with a mystery payload so in this video we will be sending a, a basically a space plane that will be going to turbine orbit and then deploying a payload and coming back to the KSC and as you can see I'm building the payload which will of course be a small a small remote controlled um, satellite I guess but that satellite won't remain in Kerbin orbit it will go somewhere now I won't spoil where it will go but it won't be remaining in Kerbin orbit except the space plane will remain in Kerbin orbit and it will of course come back to the KSC so as you saw I started building the main fuselage of the space plane and now I'm building some side boosters and yep so I'm using the rapier engines for the space plane because rapier engines are very good because they are air breathing engines which are great for atmospheric flight and there's also a high altitude mode or basically like a closed cycle mode which uses oxidizer and doesn't use any air which means we can use the rapiers both in an atmosphere and in a vacuum which is great of course I just had to pause the commentary you might have sort of seen that so yeah talking about rapier engines great engines of course so now we are we've built the wings we've added some little fuselage things I don't know what to call them I don't know but yeah we are building a space plane which is great of course space planes are great well they were great in KSP1 until KSP2 because the problem with KSP2 is that back in KSP1 we were able to make interplanetary SSTOs using the liquid fuel nuclear engines wow that was very badly sentenced badly sentenced that's not a word but whatever so basically we could use um liquid fuel and nuclear engines but in ksp2 nuclear engines use hydrogen which means that now interplanetary ssto's are very difficult just an ssto that can go to minimus is extremely difficult so yeah but we are now launching so let's launch we're on the one way why am i saying launch we are gonna take off of course so there we go quick takeoff and there we go we are already well turning up <laughs> pitching up i guess and pulling the landing gears bike in and as you can see i've sped up the footage two times because why not so yeah the ascent was pretty easy like we've got very good twr like those those rapier engines are extremely powerful so i could i was able to pitch up quite aggressively Though usually if I've got a lot lower TWR I would hug the the ocean. I would basically stay like very close to the ocean where there's the most air, but yeah. It's fine. It's like these rapier engines are like so good. I have I think four is just overkill. Like I think I think it would have been fine with just two, but I like to have four because like I'd rather have more than less. So there we are pinching up. And I, one weird thing is that, like, see, like, the the plane is, like, shaking, like, really weirdly. Like, it's, like, whenever I, like, um, like, roll a little bit, then suddenly the plane just shakes, like, really aggressively. It's really weird. I don't know how to fix it, but, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. It's, like, just shaking really intensively, which is, like, really odd. Like, I don't know what, what to do about it. So if you have a fix then please say it in the comments, that would be nice. And there we go, we've now switched to closed cycle mode. Which is of course much more, much less efficient, but it's also like, it means we can use the rapier engines in the back. So now I'm trying to pitch much more aggressively, to try this time to get gain altitude. 
yeah so now our goal is to gain altitude and there we go we've got an 80 kilometer upper oapsis which is perfect and now i'm gonna hold prograde to produce the least amount of drag so now i'm making the maneuver node to get a nice orbit so i think that's pretty nice pretty nice pretty nice so yeah that's good i guess what's the next step well i don't know what the next step is well the next step is of course time warping and i'm just gonna point towards a maneuver node and then i will be doing the next part of the journey of course before we can do the next part which is of course well, the remote control satellite we need to get into an orbit and there we go doing our circularization burn and that's perfect and yeah as you can see we've got way too much delta v in this space plane but whatever yeah 700 meters per second that's way too much but we've now deployed our little satellite so where will we be going well let's first of all deploy that antenna it, it, it looks a little bit weird <laughs> so yeah we will be going to minmus because why not now unfortunately we won't be landing on minmus because i didn't put any landing legs because the thing is that like the landing legs wouldn't fit into that small cargo bay so i just decided mm, let's just let's make this an orbital research facility like we're gonna research in high minmus orbit so our Minmus orbit will be at 100,000 kilometers. 100,000 kilometers? That's excessive. At 100 kilometers above the surface of Minmus. Because this is our research thing, even though we don't have any science modules in the game yet. So, yeah. Well, then again, the new science update is coming soon. Soon. I don't know when. And I, I don't think you know either. But it's soon. So now let's do a little tweaky burn to get a m more, a better Minmus encounter. So there we go. In the meantime, our SSTO is in orbit, enjoying being in Kerbin orbit whilst we go to Minmus in this little satellite. So that's when I then, well, let's just wait until, yeah, then I found a glitch. Because all of a sudden, the game just started screaming at me. Like, the game kept screaming that we've lost control. Even though we've got, like, perfectly fine control of the satellite. Like, the game is just screaming, loss of control of, um, whatever that the satellite was called. Loss of control, loss of control. Even though I've not lost control, like, I've got perfect control. So, that was weird, but the, the bug kind of fixed itself, so, yeah. And there we go, we are now in min high minimus orbit. So let's go back to the SSTO. Because, yeah, the minimus bit wasn't the important bit. The, the important bit of this video was course showcasing this cargo SSTO. I have already done SSTOs in KSP2, but I've only done one. Yeah, one SSTO before. So this is the second SSTO I've ever made. So, great. So now we're gonna start, we made a maneuver node to try to get close to the Kerbal Space Center. And I of course realized that I was gonna undershoot pretty aggressively. So in the end, well at first I was gonna undershoot the KSC and then something happened. And I'm not gonna spoil it. So then again, yeah, this video is quite short. This video is shorter than usual, it's only um, 13 minutes. Usually my KSP2 videos are like 20 minutes and longer than that. So yeah, shorter video than usual. It's probably because I didn't have time to make this video, like... I started making the video on Friday and this morning, this Saturday morning. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this video out on... I, I hope I'll be able to get it out, like, today. But I don't know, maybe I'll have to get it out tomorrow, which is Sunday. But yeah, we are starting our descent and that's when I realized, oh, I'm gonna undershoot. So, yeah, like, you can just see, like, I'm undershooting quite a lot. So, yeah. I don't know. In the end, I had to, like, use a little bit of engine power, because... 
Yeah, we're under shooting. There we go. I use a little bit of close cycle burning. Because, like, we are still too high up to use the air breathing mode. There's not enough air up high. So we have to use a little bit of the close cycle. But we've now moved to um, air breathing mode. So, yeah. And as you can see... Yeah, I think the control surfaces are way too big. Like, that does... It's both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing in that this this um, space plane is extremely controllable. Like, it doesn't flip, it doesn't do anything. It's like, it controls very well. It's very easy to fly. So for beginners, I would definitely recommend this SSU. Like, it's really easy to fly. That does mean that whenever you try to do, like, smaller inputs, then they, basically what happens is, like, the entire ship just wobbles really intensively. And it's just kind of it's kind of weird. So yeah, maybe either make the control con control surfaces smaller or like change the authority. So yeah, because I forgot. First of all, I didn't change the control surface area because I wanted something that was really controllable. And thank and second of all, I um what was it again? Oh yeah, and second of all, I forgot to change the authority because I'm stupid. Or I've also got, and I've also got goldfish memory. So yeah, let's now and then, and so I inputted a little bit of engine power, and then I realized, oh no, I'm gonna overshoot the KSC this time. So yeah, now I decided to go into a very steep dive, and then I realized I can't see the KSC. Like now with all the new clouds in KSP, with all the new clouds, it's actually really difficult to see the KSP the KSC in KSP2, like, I can just, I, I can, I can now see it, but, like, at the time, like, I couldn't see it, but now you can see it with all the rings and things like that, because we're getting much closer, and that's when I realized, oh, no, I'm undershooting, no, I'm, yeah, I'm overshooting, so I decided to do a very steep dive, which is, um, kind of dangerous, so, yeah, I realized I had to do, like, a very intense dive, so yeah, the video is coming to an end. We are now approaching the KSC. We're gonna pass through some clouds and there we go. We can now see the KSC and once again, I'm overshooting. So I'm still holding a pretty steep angle of ascent, descent, but we are approaching. I decided to um, retract, not retract. Um, deploy the landing gear to produce more drag like that we can arrive as slow as we can and 90 meters per second that's pretty slow I've um, I've unlocked the brakes as well and yeah landing gears and KSP2 are just as bad as in KSP1 like you can just see how wobbly it is like I just put on the brakes like this is really wobbly but whatever so yeah devs please fix landing gear like we need better landing gear than this but yeah i guess this isn't the end of the video so well we landed so that's great so yeah on the left hand side is a video for you on the right hand side is a playlist and don't forget to like and subscribe goodbye